Hello, and thank you for joining me. You're watching Word of Inspiration, and my name is Dr. Bretha Sewa Ali. I present Word of Inspiration, a daily program that is designed to encourage you in your daily living and to inspire and motivate you to be all that God created you to be. Today, my message is entitled Separate But One. This is part of the series I'm doing on God's purpose for gender identity. And my text is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 22 to 24, where God says, and the Bible says, and God formed man out of the rib of the, of God formed the woman out of the rib of the man. And when he had brought her to Adam, he said, wow, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. And because she was taken out of man. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and the two shall be called one flesh. But before I get into my message, I wanna encourage somebody. I wanna encourage you to be strong. You know, David was the one who was able to face Goliath and kill him when there were 40,000 Israelites all walking in fear. How did David become so bold? He said this, that your servants has wrestled with the bear and the lion and with his bare hands, he has killed them. Today, what are you wrestling with? I want to encourage you that some of the challenges that come in your life can feel like a bear or a lion. I don't know any living human being right now who can say that they've wrestled with a bear and a lion. But sometimes situations would come in your life that literally feel like you're wrestling a lion, something fierce, something that you have to overcome. David, David said, I was able to wrestle with the bear and I was able to wrestle with the lion. I'm sure during those times when he was taking care of sheep and he wrestled with these beasts of the forest, he wondered, what is this all about? Why are they bothering me? But I tell you something, anytime he wrestled with the bear, he became a champion. The next time he wrestled with the lion, he became a champion. So when, the, when Goliath came his way, he, he was able to say with confidence, I can deal with this gentleman. I can deal with him. Today, I want you to know that you're a champion. If you've been able to overcome anything, you're a champion because it takes strength to overcome. And champions are not just champions because they are crossing their legs and not doing anything. It's because they've wrestled with something. So whatever you're grappling with, the book of James tells us, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trial of your faith worketh patience, so be strong. So let's get into our message. Adam finds Eve and is so happy and says, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Well, Paul siphons off of that scripture and encourages men to love their wives. He, said, he says in Ephesians chapter five, verse 15 to 33, he said, whoever hates his own flesh. Men, if you're married, your wife is part of you. Love nourish and cherish her you're supposed to take care of her just like christ took care of the church today i want to challenge you if you're married do you feel you actually nourish cherish and take care of your wife or do you just tolerate her and assume she'll always be there you know once i listened to a story it was actually a sermon where the person was saying that there are a lot of the times we take people for granted and assume they will always do what they do and so one day they decide, I've stopped doing this. You take me for granted. And then we learn to value the people in our lives. And I also heard the story once about a man who was always losing his pen. In fact, he switched a pen every day. And sometimes I do that too. I go on rounds and I drop my pen. I pick another one because I know I'll always find one. Well, his friend asked him why he was always losing his pen. And then he said, well, it doesn't mean anything to me. These are cheap pens. So he told him, buy a very expensive pen and see if you would lose it. So he went out and bought probably a $130 pen. And then two years later, his friend met him and asked him, where is your pen? He said, I have it. He told him, why didn't you lose it? He said, well, I spent $130 to buy this pen. You think I'm going to lose it? No, I'm going to take care of it. Similarly, if you value the people in your lives, you would polish them, you would cherish them, you would nourish them, you will look out for them, and you will neglect them. Today, I came to encourage you, God wants you married and strong. But if you're single, I want you to know you're equally strong. You know, Paul was the one who authored most of the New Testament, most of it. He was single. And in fact, he tried to espouse that most people should stay single. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, if you read from 15 downwards, he said, are you single? Stay single. 
I'm not stopping you from getting married. And he said this wasn't a law. It was his own judgment. He said, I wish everybody was like me. In his opinion, if you're single, you're able to do God's work. But then he said, those who are married take on a new care. In fact, he referred to it several times. And I'm sure that's what Jesus was talking about when he talked about the cares of life. Is my husband happy? Did I do something to offend them? Did I cook right? Did I clean the house? And for the men, they'll keep wondering, did I buy the right gifts for her? They are cares of this life. But God in his wisdom said he made male and female that they come together. I think of people like Oprah Winfrey, single but strong. I think of Maya Angelou, extremely effective woman, single. Does that make her any more deficient? No. So if you're single, I want to encourage you, you are complete. God made you complete. If you're a single man, you're complete. And if you're a single woman, you're still complete. Don't feel deficient. However, at the right time, if God brings somebody your way, together you'll be stronger. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us in chapter 4, verse 9 to 12, he says that two are better than one, for they have a good reward for their labor. Then he goes on to give three reasons. He says if, if, if one falls down, the other person who is equally strong will lift them up. And if two lie together, they have heat. Then the third reason, he said if one is going and another accosts them, if you have somebody attack you, then the other person who is single and still strong, together you will fight them. So two are better than one. Then he says, woe unto him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another one to help him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Today, I just wanted to encourage you that if you're single, just know that you are strong. If you're female, God made you special. But if you're married, remember, God brought two together to be recognized as one flesh, learn to nourish one another, cherish one another, and love one another. God richly bless you. This has been Dr. Bertha Ayi presenting Word of Inspiration with a message, separate but one. Please join me tomorrow to continue this series.